I know a lot of people are going to think that this is fake, but I swear it's not. I've got my best friend as a witness. This happened a few years ago when I was about 13. I'm 5'7 and 125 pounds, so I'm pretty small. But I usually have pepper spray and a pocket knife on me. I am embarrassed to say, though, in the excitement of exploration with my best friends, that I forgot my pepper spray and knife. I love to explore and travel, even. Or especially in places that I'm not allowed. So when I moved in, of course, one of the first places that I explored was the train tracks. So, I had my best friend come over one day to explore the neighborhood with me, and we decided the train tracks was the perfect place to go to. We were walking for an hour or two, but it was still light outside, and we had just passed a small neighborhood street, so we felt safe. But when I turned around to throw a stick, I saw five hooded figures following us from about 200 feet away. I tried to pretend that I didn't see them, and I told my best friend calmly. We decided to look at them straight on and see what they would do. Once we looked at them, they stopped, and so did my friend and I. We stared at each other for a few seconds, but it felt like hours. Finally, they made their move. The three of them went left, and two of them went to the right. We heard the sound of loud and fast footsteps, so we finally snapped out of our trance and ran away as fast as we could. We were both in cross country and we were being held together by adrenaline, so we could run faster than we ever had before. Luckily, because I had explored on those same tracks alone a few days ago, I knew that if we ran half a mile more, we would be on a bridge above another small neighborhood. We somehow made it. I had no clue if we were still being followed or not, but out of fear, we jumped. The jump was only about 10 feet down and we kept running deep into the neighborhood until we finally saw other people. And then we slowly walked home, shaking and exhausted. Looking back now, I regret not telling my parents, but I was scared that they wouldn't let me explore alone anymore. But I never went back to those train tracks again. It all started in my last year of high school. I had gotten really into the hardcore scene for my city and I attended a bunch of small gigs with my best friend. One day, I received a Facebook friend request from a guy named Alan. Looking at his profile and the stuff that he posted, I noticed that he was only three years older than me, from the same city and liked many of the bands that I did. So, 17 year old me added him. We soon started talking, mostly about bands and school. He was in the middle of getting his college degree and I was about to choose mine. From time to time he would tell me how pretty I was and asked if I had a boyfriend. I did find him attractive too, so I flirted back. However, I quickly lost interest since a few minutes after flirting, he would tell me that he actually had a girlfriend but they were having some trouble. I didn't want to take part in any cheating kind of stuff or such so I just told him that he should think what was best for him and his girlfriend and to do the right thing. From then on, I limited my chats with him to music and school once more and he too stopped flirting with me. Anyway, a month or so had passed without texting, when suddenly I got a message from him. We talked like we had used to and just before I had to say bye, he told me that he had broken up with his girlfriend and felt so much better. He thanked me for always listening to him without judging and said that my advice had really helped him out. I felt happy for him. I honestly don't know if this girl was really mean or not but he seemed happy to be out of the relationship, and I wanted to be a good friend, so I was happy for him too. Now at this point, I don't know what came to me. Maybe it was because I did find him attractive, or because it was very late and I wasn't making the best decisions. But I told him that my best friend's birthday was in a couple days, and that he should come to the party too. He agreed in a second, and... 
I told him to meet me at the station close to her house. So, I finally got to meet him at the station, after almost half a year of talking online. I know what you're thinking and now, he wasn't some 50 year old weirdo. Although I must admit, I should have been more careful because he could have been someone interested in taking my liver. Nevertheless, we met. It was a bit awkward at first since neither of us knew what to say. So we just walked to my friend's house and making small talk. I guess we were both very nervous. When we got there, things got better. And we actually had a pretty good time. Although he pretty much only talked to me. For the next month, we kept going out for basic dates. Until he officially asked me to go study and we became a couple. And from here on, on, the actual creepy stuff would start. It hadn't been more than three weeks and I was starting to feel anxious. It's a weird feeling that I used to have when I was little. And knew that I was going to be punished for either getting bad grades or doing something bad in general. It was stupid though. Because I wasn't a child anymore. And I wasn't doing anything wrong. I just had this feeling whenever he was around me. What made it even more complicated is the fact that I didn't really feel that he had changed. He wasn't rude or anything. He was just unsettling. He would want to see me 24-7. We never went to his house and whenever we were at my house, he would refuse to be anywhere else but my room. He would spend hours just staring at me. And believe me, I know you could take all of this with romantic intentions, but the way that he made me feel was not warm and fuzzy, but instead shivery and anxious. I must admit, I took the first opportunity I could to break up with him. He meant to text his ex some lyrics to a breakup or love song, and he texted them to me by accident. He apologized and explained that it was just to let her down for good. But I had none of it. I had told him that we may have jumped into the relationship thing too soon. And that I thought it was better if we went back to just being friends. That night, he called me 37 times. The next morning, I had school and throughout the day, I got a text message that immediately made me nervous. What time will you be home? I'm coming to talk, he wrote. I really didn't want to see him, so I told him that I wasn't sure and that he shouldn't go, and that he should just leave. Plus, we had only been dating for like five weeks, so I make a big deal about it, just to let it go. I did in fact get home late that night, and oh surprise, guess who was standing in front of my door? He had a blank stare, and when I was passing by to park the car in the garage, he followed me with expressionless eyes. I went inside and left my stuff in my room, shaking. My brother came to me asking what the heck was going on. He said that Alan had been standing outside for over four hours now. I told him that I would handle it, since he's my little brother and I didn't want him to worry. I took a deep breath and I went outside. We argued for about an hour, in which he told me that he loved me and that he knew we were meant to be together. I told him that I wasn't really feeling comfortable and I just wanted to go back to being friends. He told me to move in with him. For a few minutes, I was speechless. He used this time to explain how he would get a job and keep studying so I could finish high school and then get a job too. According to him, we would then start a business together and have our first child by the time that I was 21. He had our life planned out and I had no saying in it. I managed to catch a moment to speak and tell him straight out that he was out of his mind. I was only 17 at the time and nowhere close to thinking about living with them, much less having a child. Alan then made this weird face like he wanted to cry but not actually. I swear that it was like a cheap acting trick and it just creeped me out even more. I cut him off, told him that we were over, and ran inside. From here on, he got worse and worse. 
He would text my friends, even if they had no idea who he was, and told them to tell me that I needed to be with him, where I belonged. I blocked him from all social media since he would send me non-stop messages, and post weird poems that had a hint of scary with things like, I stand in the dark so you can't see me, but you're the light so I'll always see you. He called my house and if I picked up he would yell, I need you, nonstop. If anyone else does, he would just hang up. Now, this kept happening for almost half a year and I know what you're thinking. Why didn't I call the police? Well, I think that I failed to mention that I'm from Mexico City and I can promise you, no officer is going to take any action against a few dozen phone calls, so I didn't even think they would know what to do. Little by little, the phone call stopped, but he was still texting me and dedicating me songs in an online radio station most people from the hardcore scene would listen to. This one particular time he dedicated, your betrayal to me. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Alan became unstable. He would go from dedicating me love poems to insulting me, saying that I was ruining his life. I honestly lost count of how many crazy and scary things he had done in the past years. But I think the worst of them all was this one time a year ago, when I went to a concert with my best friend. I was kind of flirting with one of the musicians that opened for the band, and my friend was playing the wingman. He went to get us some beers and just as he stood up, I turned to chat with my friend. I saw two figures take the empty chairs in front of us. It was an Alan and a girl that he had introduced as his sister. The moment my friend and I saw them, we froze. A mix of being uncomfortable and scared got to me and I just looked away. You cut your hair. He broke the silence, reaching for my bangs. I instinctively pulled back. It looks great on you. Everything does. He spoke in a soft but numb voice. I nodded and told him that I was with someone, so he should leave the chair. I looked to his sister to encourage her to, but she was absent-minded at playing with her phone. Do you want a paper flower? He asked, completely ignoring what I had said before. The guy that I had been flirting with was making his way back, but since he saw two of the people now in his place, he kind of drifted away. Dude, you seriously need to get going. I was losing my patience, but I didn't want to make a scene, because the concert hadn't even started and I wasn't going to get kicked out. Once again, he ignored me and started making a rose out of a napkin. Let's go over there. My friend suggested and I took her on the offer, or so I intended. Alan's sister, who suddenly lost interest in her phone, was now grabbing me by the arm tight, keeping me from walking away. Not saying a word, it just grabbing me. I tried to loosen myself, but before I could, Alan took one of my hands and put the paper flower in it, and then his sister let go. Now, for what happened after this, I must say two things. One, I am known for being maybe a little too aggressive, but when it comes to people who I cared for at any point in my life, I have a soft spot. And two, Alan has been beyond creepy. Given that, it had now been around three years and he wouldn't leave me alone, but he had never been violent. Both rules were broken that night. I snapped. I took the flower that he just gave me and, looking him straight in the eyes, I slammed it into the table so it would lose any shape that it had. You're not a good guy. You're a creep who won't leave me alone and thinks that I owe him a relationship. I whispered it close to his face with an anger that I don't think that I had ever felt. My friend and I pushed through and made our way outside for a smoke and to clear my head. We were chatting, I was shaking and she was trying to calm me down, asking me if I was feeling better and telling me that if I wanted to leave it was okay. But then we heard the screaming. At first it was some bottles falling and a couple screams so we thought that something had messed up and they were mocking them, but it didn't stop there. The yelling continued and we saw the bouncers at the entrance rush inside. I quickly put on my cigarette and headed towards the commotion with my friend. 
In all honesty, I was hoping to see just another bar fight, but it was worse than that. There were two tables knocked over, and I don't know how many broken beer bottles on the floor. A bunch of personal articles from a backpack were being poured onto the floor, and the one responsible for all of this was no other than Alan. Quickly enough, one of the bouncers restrained him as the other one searched him for any potential weapon that he might have had. His sister, on the other side of the small venue, screamed at Alan and the bouncers, saying some stuff that I couldn't really make out since there was a lot of noise. As they literally dragged him out, I was pushed outside by the crowd and stepped to the side as speechless, watching Alan curse and kick. I had never seen him this violent. In fact, I had never seen him violent at all. And then he saw me. You see what you did to me? He yelled at me, but since a small crowd had formed around, people thought that he was on drugs, yelling nonsense. You ruined my life. My eyes started to fill with tears. Maybe it was because I was scared or because I still couldn't fully understand what was going on. What could I have possibly done to him in order to make him like this? Thankfully, my friend found me among the crowd and without even asking, she dragged me to the subway and back home. I cried all the way. I haven't seen him ever since, but I know that he's still around. How so? Well, I now live in Japan. I've been living here for about a year or so now. It was my birthday a few months ago, and I got a big bouquet of roses with a card that read, I shouldn't have given you paper when you deserve the real ones. Happy birthday, my love. Alan. When I was 12 years old, I got an unusual opportunity. I was able to be involved in a study abroad program where I would live in England for several months. I'm from a very small town in the US originally. The program was run through my middle school and went over to England with a group of around 15 other 12 year olds. Before we went to the homes that we would be living in for the next few months, we ended up staying in London for about a week to do some sightseeing. When we got there, we were staying in a small hostel downtown, and my school had essentially rented out the entire hostel for the kids, and for the adults that were chaperoning the trap. If I remember correctly, there were two adults with us. Every day, we would have a scheduled activity, and then we would have a significant amount of free time, where we were allowed to explore the city as a group with just the kids and no adults. The second day that we were there, my friends and I were out together, and we ended up stopping to look at some kiosks that had uh, souvenirs. We were about a block from our hostel. I was around the back side of the kiosk. It would look like that I was alone, and I feel someone grab onto me. I turn and see a middle-aged man, most likely homeless, looking at me and he says, Hey there, pretty girl in the creepiest voice that I had ever heard. I immediately darted around the other side of the kiosk, back to my friends. Before I could even tell them what had happened, he came around and got super close to me and said, You can run, you can hide, but I will find you. And then he walked away. I immediately grabbed my friend and started pulling her back towards the direction of her hostel. I was crying when we got back there and I told our chaperones what had happened. They essentially brushed it off and didn't do anything. Every day that we were in London from then on, I would see him one to three times a day when we were out. He would never get close and never say anything, but he would always be smiling while watching me. Every time I would see him, I would point him out to either one of these chaperones or another kid in our group. On the last day that we were there, we were getting ready to leave and we were catching a train from London to Leeds. While we were waiting at the train platform, I hear her. Bye, little girl. I'll see you soon. And I turn around and sure enough, there he is. He quickly leaves and again, no one in my group really does anything. Except for the other kids that were completely freaked out. I never saw him again after seeing him on the train platform. But I still remember his voice and 
Every time I think of it, I get a shiver down my spine and think about how close to danger I was.